To yourself and more importantly you owe it to him to say I need to try once in my life I need to really say let me give every single bit of it to him one time if you'll do it one time brethren all of it you'll never leave you'll understand the truth doesn't mean that life's going to be perfect but it will sure as hell be a whole lot better than it is now so how much power does Jesus Christ have? You know, people want to say the Bible is not true. The Bible has been changed. And we don't have the right Bible. And how do we know what the Word of God is? And I've seen so many people, asking liars, white, black, Jew, uh, Muslim, all of them. The, the Bible's not right. There's 200 Bibles. And they're right. There is 200 Bibles. There's only one Bible. There's only one Word of God. It's the 1611 King James Bible. And let me just give this to you again before we get into the power of this best friend. Are you mean to tell me that God is so small, so small, so, so little, that he can't preserve his word, right? That people can save coins, paintings. They can save ancient, ancient relics from millennia, centuries, man, centuries, even thousands of years ago. Mere men and women can do this. But Almighty God cannot preserve his word in any way that he chooses? Are you kidding me? What? What type of asinine fool believes this? I'll tell you who. The same people that do not want you to be free, they are the ones that promote that because they don't want you to be free. Remember, they want you chemically and spiritually and physically dependent on them, not on the truth. So this best friend who's come to you and said, look, we're going to make some life changes, you and me together. How much power does this best friend have? 1 Peter 3.22, in that book that so many people say is not real, but I know that it is real because I've lived it. 1 Peter 3.22, who is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him, talking about Jesus. Where is Jesus? He's at the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Everything is in subject unto him. That's just one. We're going to read a few more. But I'm not going to read them all to you because it's just too many. Revelation 17, 14. These, talking about the ones I just talked about, the liars, the cons, the doctors, and all these people that want you to be in their, in their prison. These will make war with the Lamb. The Lamb is Jesus. And the Lamb shall overcome them. Why? For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him, you, if you choose to be, 
And they that are with him are called chosen and faithful. So now your best friend is, is not only in the, in the first part, first Peter we read, your best friend has got everything is in subject to him. In Revelation 17, 14, we read that your best friend is a king. He sits at the right hand of God. So everything is in subject to your best friend. Everything bows to him. He's got it all. He is a king. He sits at the right hand of God. And if you are with him, you are called chosen and faithful. Your enemy will make war against him and they will lose. Well, that's a pretty impressive best friend, is it not? But that's not even enough. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen, strengtheneth me. So now your best friend, your king, says, who sits at the right hand of God, is saying, listen to me. You can do anything through me. Through me. You see, your Babylonian doctor and your pills and your Hollywood and your YouTube liars and the social media, they can't tell you that because they don't have no power to do it. But Jesus Christ does. And he's saying, listen, best friend, you can do all things through me and I will strengthen with you. Philippians 2, 9 through 10. Verse 9. Wherefore God, talking about the Father, has also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So now your best friend is saying, hey, you want to know something? Even my name has power. Simply saying my name has power. Verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Whew! Let me tell you now. So Jesus Christ is saying, my name alone can shake the heavens, can shake the earth. And in the Bible, don't you know that the devils ran in fear from just the name Jesus when Jesus would speak? Jesus says, everything in heaven is going to bow. Everything on earth is going to bow to me. And this is your best friend. Remember, he's your best friend. He came to you and said, listen, I'm going to help you. I'm going to break you free of this if you really want to be free. Well, let's finish. Matthew 28, 18, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Let me say it again. Here's your best friend. He's a king. He sits at the right hand of God. His name alone can shake the earth. Everything bows to him. Everything is in subjection to him. And now he comes and tells you, Hey, best friend, every single bit of power in heaven and in earth belongs to me. That's your best friend. Let me ask you, man. How much? Should you worry? How much should you fret? How much anxiety should you have? How much fear should you have if you really believe it? If you really believe that he loves you and you love him, how much should you worry? Seems a little disrespectful to your best friend if you leave knowing all that with him and you said, I need you. Even if you broke down crying to him, fell on your face and said, please help me. Do you think if he loved you any, he would refuse you because he said, I will in no way cast out anybody that comes to me. So all power has been given unto your best friend. Let's review it again, brethren. Your best friend is a king. Your best friend has all power. Your best friend sits at the right hand of Almighty God. Your best friend said that everything in heaven and in earth will bow down to me. Everything in heaven and in earth is in subjection to me. Your best friend says, you can call on me 24-7 and I will be there for you always. I will never reject you. I will love you better and more than anybody on this earth ever could. Because my love is perfect. Because I'm the only thing that is perfect. And he says, just my name alone, if you really believe in me and love me, just my name alone is enough. Now I'm asking you, I'm asking you, do you need anything else? But he's not, he's not done. He's, and then he promised you, he says, that through me, he says, you can do anything. Anything. But notice what he says at the very end, almost at the very end of the book. We go to Revelation 21.8, and he says, Do not fear them. Do not fear this life, or you will not reign with me. Because, see, it's disrespectful to have your best friend say, This is, I, I've got it all. What the hell are you going to be afraid of? It's disrespectful to him, if you really believe it. Revelation 21 eight says, But the fearful, notice the first words out of his mouth. Now he's going to go on to list 
the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. But notice the first words out of the mouth of your best friend, Jesus, the king, but the fearful and the unbelieving. But the first is the fearful. So you can take your fears, you can take your worries, you can take your anxiety, you can take all that and you can write it on a piece of paper and you walk yourself outside and you take a match or a lighter and you burn it up. You burn it up before God Almighty and say, no more, no more. And you pray to Jesus Christ and tell him that some lowly man preached some sermon today and you would like to partake of it. And if you will be patient, and if you will come to him and talk to him with a true heart, your life will change. Now, you must be willing to believe in him and have faith, because he don't like BSers. He don't like cons. He just told you, I've got it all. But he may want you to do some work. He may, may, want, he may want to see, how is my new best friend, how are they going to do by me? But if you will be quiet, if you will shut up, your life will start to change. These fears, these phobias will go away. You will start to be what the Bible calls a new creature. Guess what? You will be born again. Are you getting it? Born again. And how did all this happen? How did it happen? Through Jesus. You see, because your Almighty Father, listen to me, did not give you a spirit of cowardice, of phobias. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God has given that to you if you want it. And how did he say that you can have it? Through his son, Jesus, which has got it all. Remember, he's a king. He sits at the right hand of God. Everything is in subjection to him. His name alone can shake the earth and heavens. He has all power in everything. And he says, that through him you can do anything. Now, I'm asking you, what do you need? You don't need nothing but Jesus Christ. That's all that you need. And don't you ever forget it and don't you let anybody take it from me. If you need to talk to me, if I can help you in any way, I don't have all the answers. I'm just a lowly servant of the Almighty Father, and I'm telling you right now, Jesus Christ is my best friend. That's how I broke free was by real faith. Not a little bit, but all of it. You email me, and I'll do the best I can. Here's my website, flockofjesus.com. I'm waiting to build onto it even more. It's already done. But, again, take all your fears, your phobias, your anxieties, your worries, and your doubts, and burn them up. Because if you really want to get rid of them, it is there for you to get rid of it. May the Almighty Father, the one true God, the one that they doubt, they shun, they don't believe in, may he bless you, may he love you, and may he put his hands on you. And when he does, you want to know what he's going to tell you? Follow my son Jesus, and he will be your best friend. And guess what? This best friend has got it all. There ain't nothing that this best friend can't do. And in return, you must love him unconditionally above everybody. Jesus, your best friend, must come before everybody and everything on this earth. It, he has to be number one or he's not going to be your best friend. Number one. But guess what? He's going to make you number one to him because he's perfect. May the Father bless each and every one of you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Så gärna I kunden väl svara Endast ja eller nej